how much tension do you apply to a lock? And how do you know if you're applying enough tension or, or too much tension? What are some of the indicators? Well, fellas, a lot of times when somebody's picking a lock on YouTube, they'll say, well, I'm applying moderate tension to this lock. And, you know, the question comes, well, what exactly do you mean? What is light tension or heavy tension? And I really wish there was an answer I could give you by saying something like, well, you simply apply 4.23 pounds of energy to the tip of your finger against that tension wrench, and uh, that's exactly what you need to do. But, you know, in truth, it's not that easy. There are some variables, but there are times when we'll use heavy tension, light tension, or moderate tension. I'm going to show you what we mean by those. I won't be able to tell you it's exactly 4.23 pounds, but I will give you some of the visual indicators and some of the type of locks that you'd use those types of tension against. Now the first one I like to talk about is heavy tension. And to, to demonstrate that, we're going to use probably the most common lock in the United States. This is a quick set. It's a very low quality lock. Low quality locks are a perfect type of lock to use heavy tension against because there's so much slop. The tolerances are so poor. We can apply heavy tension, lock all the pins up, and we can just take a pick and snap those uh, pins right into place, and it'll pop right open very quickly. So that would be an example of heavy tension, and I'll show you that in just a moment. And then we'll move on to these others. Then I'm going to move to very light tension, and to use uh, the example we'll use to talk about that is an American lock. And then I'll save the most difficult one for last, and that's a little bit more complex of a lock, and that's one with security pins, and I'll use this ABUS to demonstrate that. But before we get that far ahead, let's first talk about heavy tension, and I'll demonstrate some of the indicators. So give me a minute, let's clamp this baby up and make it happen. Alright, let's talk about this heavy tension stuff. Anytime you're dealing with a cheap lock, like this quick set or others, if it's a Chinese manufacturer lock, I always start off with heavy tension. So when we put a tension wrench in there, I mean, watch how much I flex this tension tool. I mean, I almost wrap it around there. I move it several degrees, put a lot of tension on the core. And my objective here is to, I'm not being delicate at all, I'm trying to seize up all of the pins in the core. And beginning lock pickers, this is how you usually begin with inexpensive locks. So apply a lot of tension, stick your pick in there, and just start pushing pins. Now, when they reach the shear line, what will happen is they will lock themselves into place. They won't go any further, generally, unless you really overdo it with your, with your pick. And then, bam, you're going to be in. And there you go. That's how easy it is. Very loud clicks as they move into place. But... Look at my finger. Look at my tension finger. So when you suspect that you have too much tension, look at the tip of your finger. And if you see a huge dent like this, that's a real good indication that you might be using heavy tension. And that's not always what you want to do. For example, this is an American lock. And inside of here are security pins. Now we've, we're going to go from one extreme to the other. We had very heavy tension. With this type of lock, we have to use very, very light tension. Otherwise, we will seize all the pins and we'll get absolutely no feedback. We'll never be able to open this one. So let me dump that quick set, clamp this up, and we'll show you how that happens. Okay, we looked at really heavy tension. Now let's look at really light tension. When do we use that? Well, if we're facing a lock that uh, is manufactured to pretty tight tolerances, and usually that's an expensive lock that uses standard pins, uh, then it's going to be the time to use light tension. If we're use, trying to pick a lock like this American, which contains serrated pins, that, that's another time to use very, very light tension. So I've said light tension now three times. Uh, what do I mean? When I say light tension, what I mean is you put your pick in the lock and your finger is just applying enough tension against that tension wrench to hold it in place. If you let go of it, well, in this case it's precariously balanced, but usually it'll fall out. And in the case of picking uh, locks that require light tension, the wrench falling out is not unusual because if you're doing things right. Now what we do, we're going to apply just enough tension to cause one of the pins in our lock to bind up. And that's our binding pin. We only should get one. If we go through the stack of pins and we see nothing that's bound up, that tells us that if we're just a little bit too light, apply a little bit more tension and try it again. And that time I felt pin 5. Now that the pressure is off him, there should be the next binder. You just move down feeling to find out who he is. Okay, that was pin four. Okay, 
Okay, that was pin two. And a little bit of tension now because I felt the core give. And that tells me we've got a full of uh, fault set, which means we're hung up on probably just one more pin. Now we're going to go through one more time and try to find him. And it feels like pin number... Looks like pin number one. Now you get a little bit of feedback. So that tells me he's probably a spool. See if I can get the right angle here. Trying to work around the camera. And there we go. That's very light tension. Now, when you do light tension, uh, especially against a flat wrench like this, and you take a look at your finger, there's hardly any dent in that at all. That's mostly from pushing the lock open. So very light tension is the key to opening any high security lock, lock containing serrated pins, or an expensive lock that uh, is manufactured to tight tolerances. Well, those are the two easy ones to explain. Now let's try to move to one that's not so easy, and that would be medium or moderate tension. Well, this last one is probably the most difficult to verbalize because, uh, well, I can't give you an exact poundage, and the, the thing about moderate tension is generally it'll fluctuate, as I'm getting ready to describe. Despite being difficult to verbalize, it's probably the most common level of tension that we're going to use on our locks. And when would we use it? Well... We're going to use it on locks that we know contain security pins known as spool pins or a middle of the price range lock which is manufactured to okay tolerances but if we lighten up too much we're going to drop all the pins and if we apply too much tension we're going to seize all of the pins up. Well how do you know if that's the right amount? Well we're just going to take our pick again, apply a little bit of tension, put, our, put it in there and we're going to let the lock tell us. What we're going to do, we're going to put moderate tension and move through the stack looking for a binder. If nothing binds up, that tells us we're not applying enough tension. That's what I mean by variable. So we're going to apply just a bit more tension and move through the stack again, trying to force one of them to bind. And this pin number two was the binder. And you probably noticed a little jerk. Let me see if I can do that again as it popped over there. Since we know it's two, I'll just go right to him. And what has happened, that's a, what's called a gatekeeper. That's the pin that's uh, keeping the lock vertical. And as soon as we pop him, now we're basically balanced on nothing but security pins, which are very typical for a, a moderate price range lock. Well, now we have to keep enough tension on this tension wrench to keep that gatekeeper set but, uh, and keep him from popping back down, but also enough so that we get another binder. So that's what I mean, by again, by variable. I'll move through the stack until one of the pins talks to me, telling me he's the binder. Let's see if we can find one here. And the way that he talks to us, notice a little feedback on that wrench. We're going to pop him in place. There we go. And you heard him pop. Again, keep enough tension to keep him from popping back down and enough tension to help you find the next binder. This, as I said, this is the most difficult one. Move down the stack, find out who the next one is. I must have gone by him there. There he is, pin number four. And there we go. Now, I'm putting tension on it. I don't want all those... I've got three of them set. I don't want them to fall down. I'm on number three now, and he's set. Looking for the next one. And I believe that's him. And there we go. Now when you look at your finger, you are going to see a slight dent. And that's because after you set that pin, if you let up too much, everything's going to drop on you. So you've got to keep a little bit of tension. You'll also want to fluctuate a little bit. If you feel, let me, let me get this set back again. If you're in there and you have that tension on it, and you start picking and you feel something giving, and let me think that on pin one here, he starts giving me feedback. I have to test it with my thumb to make sure I'm right on that balance point so that he sets properly. Well, he's not going to do it now. But 
you're varying that pressure on, on your finger to determine when that pin is going to break, when he's going to pop into place. And as soon as he does, you've got to be ready to push that tension wrench over and lock him in place. So, fellas, as I said, it's hard to verbalize, but uh, I hope I have helped you understand that when to use heavy tension on cheap locks. That it's uh, When you've got a really high-quality lock, that's when you want to focus on keeping your tension very, very light. But for most of our locks, it's going to be this moderate tension. It's going to be something like what you've just seen here with security pins. So it's going to vary. I wish there was an answer like, as I said, 4.23 pounds, but it's just not that way. Anyway, fellas, good luck with this. Everybody stay safe, and for goodness sake, stay legal.